Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah We left off where Allah Azza wa Jal says fi kitab al-kareem Ya ya ladina amanu wa taqu allaha wa tanzuru nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa taqu allaha inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalun wa la takunu ka ladina nasu allaha fansahum man fusahum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah and let every soul look to what it has put forth for tomorrow. And fear Allah, indeed Allah is aware of what you do. And do not be like those who forgot Allah, so he made them forget about their own souls. Those are the defiantly disobedient ones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing Ahli Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us from the traits of the fasiqun and the munafiqun, the hypocrites and the wicked uh, sinful uh, disobedient people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exhorting us to taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us and he's commanding who who's he addressing he's addressing ahli iman ya amanu wa taqullaha and in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, uh taqwa maratain in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions taqwa twice he says ya ladina amanu wa taqullaha wal tandur nafsu ma qaddamat li ghad Wattaqullaha. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah and look to what you have prepared, how you've prepared your souls for, for tomorrow, meaning the hereafter. There is a hereafter. <clears throat> In this verse also we see that this is a, uh, this verse exemplifies Iman and those are pillars of Iman. Like what? Like, uh, as it came in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the hadith of Jibreel, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni on Islam. And then he said, akhbirni on Iman. And, and tell me about Iman. And the first pillar is what? And tu'minu billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyum al-akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. That the Prophet wasallam said that Iman, it is to believe in Allah. It is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse tells us to believe in Allah and it's addressing Ahl Iman. Ya yuladina amanu. Ya yuladina amanu wa taqullaha. Fear Allah. And also uh, that there's a, there's a yawm al-qiyamah and that there's a death. There's a, there's a, there is a, uh, a hereafter that we have to prepare for. This is for Ahl Iman because so many people, if you look uh, in our times especially, there's so many people who don't believe in anything except death. They believe they die and that's it. So they don't believe in uh, the hereafter at all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all throughout uh, the Quran and through the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions uh, uh, along with believing in Allah and, 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 and believing in the hereafter. Uh, whoever, belie whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment, then be good to your guest. How many ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ illustrate that and show us that those are very, all the pillars of Iman, those are the pillars of Iman. They are the foundation. And that those are imperative and are, are, are emphasized uh, all throughout the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ uh, in order to show the importance and show that some of the people, Ahl al-Shubahat, the people who, who, who doubt and the people of disbelief, they disbelieve in Allah. And they disbelieve in the hereafter. Because they might de believe in some sort of destiny, some sort of decree. It might not be that they believe in the uh, uh, divine destiny, the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator uh, of, of, of all our affairs. And he has ilm of, of all of our affairs and all the other maratib al qadr, all the other levels of the qadr. But they do believe that things happen for a reason, that um, what comes around goes around. All of these kind of statements. There are some people, they believe this, but they don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they don't believe in the other important uh, pillar of Iman that is stressed, and that's Yom al -Qiyama. So then they operate in this life as if there is no hereafter, and so they just indulge, indulge, and enjoy 
uh, and a lot of times they they don't enjoy it, and a lot of times they don't achieve that happiness. How many people strive to be like other facets, other wicked, sinful people, and they can't even receive the enjoyment they do? They say, oh, look at rapper so-and-so. How many women does he have? How many does he have? Boy, do I wish I could enjoy what he's enjoying and they they they're miserable because they can't get what he's getting he's miserable and he's immersed in that he would pro possibly perhaps want to have one loyal woman instead of one instead of many in one day who just want all, all of his wealth so you find that it's all empty uh it's all uh uh empty deception of this dunya wicked sinfulness to deceive you and to keep you uh, following the shaitan and the shayateen, this deception. And it all comes from kufr and, and uh, from disbelief and from following destructive behavior, your desires, and not believing in Allah and not believing in the hereafter and not believing in that, that something is after death, that there's a, there's a, a punishment of the grave and all the other, there's barzakh as the mu'mineen believe. Going back to the main point Ibn Rajib was mentioning uh, this verse, he said, Whoever remembers Allah while in good health, in times of ease and comfort, and prepares himself for his meeting with Allah upon death and afterwards, Allah, <clears throat> Allah will in return remember him during these hardships uh, associated with death, because death is a difficult Shadaid, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult going through death during the time of death. And of course, now you've entered in bar Barzakh and you're going to be held accountable. If you are wicked, perhaps, you, perhaps you'll have discomfort and uh, uh, punishment in the grave. And if you are the righteous, then you will be, be idn Allah Ta'ala, you'll have comfort in the grave. Uh, so he says, will in return remember him during these hardships. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember them during these, this time of difficulty. He will be with the person during such difficulties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them ease, grant them success, uh, uh, assist them during this time of difficulty. Allah will be gentle with him as he assists him, takes care of him, and keeps him firm upon the worship of Allah alone when he dies. Allah will then meet the person while being happy with him. So this is the jaza of Ahlul Taqwa. This is the jaza of Ahlul Iman. This is the jaza of Ahlul Tawheed. The people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly, who who make ta'zim of Tawheed. They they exalt uh, mono, true Islamic monotheism. And they are the people of Iman, of faith. And they're the people of Taqwa, that they... Uh, they uh, Follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid his prohibitions. And then they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in joy. And that's who we want to be. We want to be of those people. We don't want to be of the wicked sinners who forgot Allah, who just indulge in every prohibition with boldness. I know people, subhanAllah, and this is not an expose of particular people's sins, but it amazes me how far these people, they, some of the people are from Islam and they pray. They pray regularly. But everything, they have so many violations, meaning major sins that they do openly, that they think, uh, you know, sometimes actions which are on the border of kufr or exalting kufr, uh, that it, it, it amazes me that, you know, they, they flaunt their riba. They flaunt it. You know, I bought a house here in London and I'm going and I've got so many bank investments and I've got this bold, you know, no, no effort to be Sharia compliant at all, you know, without interest, but instead they're bold in their investments, thinking that that empty, those empty containers full of dunya benefits will benefit them in this life as well as the hereafter. In fact, they are empty of barakah, that yeah, maybe they do have the house, maybe ahl, people of Ahli Man can't afford the house, because they're trying to be compliant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws, but Allah is with them. You don't know how Allah is going to open it up for them. But this person has chosen the path of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is bold in flaunting it and thinking that they're, they're going to see some barakah from this. Wallahu musta'an. Then Ibn Rajib, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, on the other hand, whoever forgets Allah 
during times of ease and comfort in life and fails to prepare for his meeting with him, Allah will forget him during these hardships of death. And the forgetting here means Allah will abandon the person and disregard him. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of Ahl Iman and those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who follow the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, Salawat rabbi wa salamu alayhi and ta'budullaha ka'annaka tara fa in lam tukun tarahu fa innuhu yarak that they worship Allah, that to worship Allah as if you see him. And because you can't see him, know that he sees you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of them. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.